McAllister prides itself on promoting internationalism and multiculturalism. But is that really what students experience on a daily basis? We decided to ask students about their experiences related to and definitions of cultural pride, as well as whether or not they felt like McAllister gives them the opportunity to express their cultural pride. Being a patriot. This struggle. Traditions. Being Mexican. Being Puerto Rican. Festivals. My grandmother. Enjoying all the things your culture has to offer and sharing them with others. It's a core part of my identity. I think culture shapes our social understandings or, you know, it builds a foundation for how we interpret the world. So my entire values, my, my perspectives, my ideals are all very subjective and they are subjective in accordance with my culture. I think it's important to take that into account but also be critical of your culture. The culture that I have the most pride in is when I connect to like other students around my same age that are like, we're like kind of experiencing the same thing. I'm Somali and I'm also American. Those intersections sometimes like are at odds with each other. And so for me, it's like, what is my culture? Whose culture do I find pride in? I also like find extreme pride about <coughs> my parents and where they're from and like the amount of like resilience that they have. I don't know which like, aspect of culture that I relate to more because it's like yeah I will go up to bat for the entire country Sierra Leone but also I'm kind of a little Philly hood rat at the same time yeah I have pride in where I'm from but also it's like where am I from that's fully Croatian I'm 50% Croatian but I've never had any like strong cultural ties to Croatia and I've never been there so I've never really experienced like strong pride in in my heritage because I don't know that much about it Originally it was like what reason you, where you're born, where you're from, but I think a definition that feels more true is I think where like a space you feel rooted to. For me, I guess it's in Vermont, and I don't often think about it as like a culture, but it, it is because I think I'm rooted to like the values I have. I think the root that like guides you um, and that you might like stray from, but that like comes back to your identity. Um, even when you get really far. I think it's hard to answer that question um, without like including stereotypes. I think my culture comes from my house or my friends. I, I think I'm most proud of my culture when I recognize that it's not a part of like something bigger, it's a part of myself. Cultural pride for me is being who I am and doing what I, what I, what I feel like doing anytime uh, without feeling the need to like see others as like models of how, who should I pretend to be. I come from a country that was colonized and I have like physical traits that are like non-Europeans and I feel like I keep that legacy in my blood. You know? And I like to think about it as like uh, evidence of like uh, this like history, you know. We're still here, my ancestors are still here in my body. I do think that a common understanding, a mutual understanding, is beneficial to society and individuals on both sides. So if you, if you yourself are, have the mental capacity and the emotional capacity to educate someone and sort of feel a little bit about yourself and your culture and the background that you come from and give them insight into it, then it's always a valuable experience. But in no sense should it be a responsibility. It should be if you are in a, you know, a place to share. It's a privilege for you to be able to share your culture and then give them a little insight. Because we identify a certain way, we don't have to like, it's not up to us fully to like educate people in our culture, but it, at the same time I feel like we do have some sort of responsibility of like, we're being like degraded or like targeted in some sense it's like we like stand up for who we are you know because it's like if we don't then who will a bunch of women of color like sat down and ate uh, like food but then we had like really good discussion because i feel like a lot of the time like these organizations are like come through and like we'll trauma bond and let's unpack all your shit and, but i'm proud of like just as facilitators like to nancy and uba and i have like sat down and literally like like 
like talked about what we could talk about and just felt like so much like excitement and like happiness and joy to like be like wow like we're gonna like do something about this stuff that like we might have been lost before <laughs> i'm one of the co-chairs for africa and like at the first meeting it turned out really well i didn't expect it to there were so many people <laughs> i wanted to cry i said wow we're probably really about to do something this year i don't want to be like a org i want it to be our spot the sounds of blackness lounge hey, used to be our confused. spot but um go off they wanted to switch it up. They want to talk about how we're so inclusive and how everybody has a spot. But you remodeled a spot that was like dedicated to somebody and you took it away from, not even just from us, the people that it's named after. You took their posters down, you remodeled it. You didn't run it by any of like the students of color on campus. The students try, but it's like Mac always does something to like set us back. Like we'll walk one step forward and Mac will push us back five. 